So first and foremost, community. Building your brand through that has made Reddit everything it is. With Breadpig, it's on the connection, and with Hitmonk, it is through design. I want to talk about all three of these and how they contribute to making something that people love, making something that people genuinely adore. And at the core of it is this message, and it's something that I will keep going back to because you really have no choice as people in that vast, very efficient marketplace of cute cat photos and alluring things to, to just give a damn, to give lots of dams. And it starts with the founders. It starts with the one or two or three or however many of you that first decide, okay, let's embark on this. So you have to wonder, what is, what is the personality of this thing you're creating? Almost think about this as an exercise as though you were creating a dating profile for this thing that you were creating because there really is a personality to this. This really is part of making that first impression. When someone hits your website, hits whatever your product is for the first time, what's the impression that they get? And part of understanding this is knowing the why. There's a fabulous TEDx talk by a guy named Simon Sinek, which I'm not gonna play for you, but I encourage you all to watch, that talks about getting at why and how great leaders can inspire movements by understanding this why. It's something that Apple has very famously done in creating an absurdly loyal following uh, by understanding truly the why and knowing that what they're doing is just sort of a supplement to why they're doing it. And if you know this, oh, that's power. So with Reddit, we wanted to be the best engine for online communities. With Breadpig, we want to make the world suck less. And with Hitmonk, we want you to love travel search as much as you love traveling. And you've got to show it off everywhere, everywhere, in everything you do. Now Groupon, oh, oh Groupon, uh, they probably shouldn't have let the cat do those IPO filings. Uh, don't let a cat do your accounting is the lesson there. But this personality that they've maintained throughout their blog, throughout this avatar of the Groupon cat, which is a sort of spokesperson for it, is a sign that even into the IPO stages, they have still held on to this personality, this, this thing. And this is part of the identity that helped build Reddit's community. Today, uh, this is last month's traffic fi figures, Reddit is one of the most traffic sites on the internet. Of course, most of that growth happened after Steve and I, the founders, left our full-time positions, so whether or not that was correlation or causation, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, but Reddit has grown today into something that we never could have expected when Steve and I were sitting in that little apartment. There are subreddits now, communities within Reddit, dedicated to a wide range of things that truly run the gamut to whatever people can dream of. And it all took this huge advertising budget of $500. Uh, this is not so much a testament to Reddit as it is a testament to this wonderful connected web we now live in. Uh, we put stickers everywhere. I would travel, I'd take the Chinatown bus regularly down to New York and I'd cover New York too. We'd started Reddit in Boston, incidentally. Um, and it wasn't long until we actually started seeing these stickers pop up elsewhere. Not my cat, although I'm terrified to think how they remove that sticker, uh, hopefully very gently. Uh, I, you start noticing this stuff and then not long after you start seeing actual art being created. Uh, this fan art uh, was all copyright infringing and so we sued every single one of the kids who made it. <laughs> No, we wouldn't do that. What industry would do that to its fans? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we wouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> instead, we're in awe of this, right? I remember doodling this thing in uh, my senior year marketing class, Irony of Ironies, while I was bored. And to see all of this come from it was just incredible, absolutely incredible. And eventually, it got to this stage where we started seeing, like, this is some serious work. This was for Portal 2, fabulous video game. Make sure to get it. Uh, and, and to see this kind of dedication and devotion was awe-inspiring. And then this, this Fernando Takai, this is the first guy, not the last, but the first person to get a Reddit alien tattooed on his body. He's in Brazil and I adore him. Um, this, is, this is what $500 in advertising gets you. All right? Now $500 doesn't pay for a lot of Super Bowl ads. In fact, you could probably do the math on it and probably pay for a nanosecond worth of Super Bowl ads. But this is the internet and that's a wonderful, wonderful advantage to anyone who's creating something that can draw in this kind of community. Everyone talks about this stuff. Think, the next time you hear a company bragging about, or, sorry, the next time you hear a company emphasizing how much they care about its customers, there's probably a good chance that because they're saying it so much, they don't actually care. Uh, it's the kind of thing where if you are doing it, you really don't need to say it, right? Why bother marketing it? Take all the money, and this, CMOs hate me for saying this, but if you took so many of the resources that are dedicated towards purely marketing or advertising a product or service online and put that money into making it better, into improving the customer service, into improving the product or the UX experience, you would probably do a lot more for your PR, for your marketing, for your buzz, for your brand love on the internet than anything else. Because no one ever forgets their first 100 or so users. Now when you've, you've started this thing, and let's say you've got your mom, she's using it, she loves it, 
All right? And you've got about 100 or so people who are willing to try this new thing that they've never experienced before. Right? These are awesome people. These are people who are willing to say, blah, 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 dot com? That's ridiculous. There are too many L's in blah, 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 because they couldn't afford blah, 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 dot com spelled normally. Right? They're willing to take a chance on a random domain name they've probably never heard of before. Maybe they saw someone tweet about it. They're willing to take a chance on a brand new thing and maybe sign up, create an account, maybe try it out, maybe do something. These people are golden. Right? These are the ones who are the most wonderful of early adopters imaginable. And so if your product is social, you've got a good opportunity there to actually use it every single day and be a presence there. Because for those first hundred, they will need to know that this is something that the actual creators give a damn about, this something the actual creators care about. So if you're not using your own product, well, forget it. I mean, this is 101 is to, to eat your own dog food, as they say. And so if you're not only eating it, but also serving it to people, uh, you're probably not doing it right. Uh, but don't make it about you. This isn't to this isn't to glamorize or celebritize a few of the founders. In fact, I think so much of Reddit's success has come from the fact that Steve and I knew from the very beginning, when we were sitting in that Somerville apartment just staring at each other in between games of World of Warcraft, there was no way, both at level 60 that summer, there is no way this thing was going to work. There was no way we were going to have a front page of the internet unless we had a ton of people willing to take time and energy into curating the vast internet with a bunch of submissions and upvotes and downvotes. And so we had to make it about our users, because otherwise it would still just be the two of us sitting in an apartment like faking submissions. And so you have to remember who pays your bills. But this is a great asset. And I'm going to get to this later when I talk about what's so broken about so much of the status quo. But as a founder, as someone creating something new, you have such an incredible relationship to those first 100 users, those first 1,000 customers. You know who pays your bills. You know who gives you the opportunity to wake up every morning and continue working on something you really love. And know that the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, um, is in extreme mode on the internet. It's more like you've probably heard of the 99-1 rule. For instance, on Reddit and pretty much any social site you know of, the vast majority of traffic to the site doesn't do anything other than read, consume content. It's a small percentage, 20% or oftentimes much less, that's actually creating the content, that's actually generating all the things that makes your site so valuable. In fact, the decision to open source Reddit was largely because we had nothing to lose. In fact, the only thing that wasn't open source about Reddit at the time was Reddit. And so it just seemed like it should make sense for us to open source it. But it didn't affect the site in any way whatsoever, negatively, because the value was in the community. Because we had already done so much to say, thank you for making this thing possible. Why not open source it? If you want to create your own version of Reddit, go for it. More power to you. So you have to look for opportunities to personalize this whole experience. Because well, if you're not social, well, you're screwed. Well, that's not true. Um, you're a little screwed. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, you've just got to try a lot harder. And this was part of the challenge uh, with Hitmonk, because we knew that we needed to cultivate the same kind of fanatical community. We needed them to care so, as much about it as we did. And so, interesting note, in seven years, I have asked tons of strangers over email for their mailing address, and not once has anyone said no which is kind of awesome, right? So I, I was curating a bunch of a big spreadsheet full of mailing addresses of people who had been early users or early tweeters or early hacker news commenters about Hitmonk uh, just to say, hey, we're going to you know, just, just want to send you a little thank you note. Really appreciate it. Uh, and, and everyone said, sure, here's the mailing address. And so spent a very long Friday night with my girlfriend, who had to make it up to the next day, uh, stuffing envelopes with these Hitmonk luggage tags, stickers, postcards, handwritten notes, signed. Had a little over 150 of these that we'd lug down to the post office the next day and sent off along the merry way. And we started seeing photos like this. This is not what people expect to get, right? I mean, again, think about this, right? It is some random dot com that is the misspelling of a rodent's name, all right? If you're willing to try this out, if you're willing to talk about it, if you're willing to share this, this thing you heard about with friends and really enjoy that experience, that is awesome. I want to feed into this and thank you as much as I possibly can. And so the least I can do is say, hey, let me send you a thank you note and then surprise you with a bunch of wonderful swag. Because making someone's, people, making someone's day should be obligatory for everyone within your company. This should go through every level. There should be some amount, figure it out, 15, 20, 25, some amount of money that you can be sustainable on that anyone can use within good judgment to make someone's day and build an experience out of something that would have otherwise been uh, a sort of just ephemeral experience that sort of comes and goes. Um, because even something as surprising as that, I mean, I, I rarely look forward to going to my post box, but I have to do it every day because there's probably something that I need to read, but 99% of it's garbage, right? It, delight someone for a change and have them be surprised in a pleasant way with what they're getting in their mailbox. Why not? Now, with that in place, you can start to build a culture from the very beginning 
where people are willing, whether they are developers or whether they are designers or whether they are customer service people, to make someone's day. And that reply is your friend. The, oh, be helpful, not shameless. The, the pro tip here, you guys are all using the Twitters, uh, but the pro tip here is to start looking at the things that are tangentially related to what you're doing. So I love New York. And so I would pay attention to people who were sort of complaining about where they wanted to go or what they wanted to do when they were here in New York so that the hitmunk, that is the Twitter personality of the hitmunk, could be helpful. Could simply say, oh, well, if you love Italian food, definitely check out some restaurant. If you, without shamelessly promoting my favorite one, oh, forget it, supper. It's really good. It's cash only, but anyway. Oh, we got a supper fan. Love it. Okay. So be, be helpful. Don't, there, there's no need to follow that up with, oh, and by the way, make sure the next time you search for a flight, use hitmonk.com. That's obnoxious. No one needs that. Just simply be helpful. You're doing it from the random Twitter handle of something with a misspelled rodent name. They're going to remember that. They're going to notice that. Perhaps they'll take a look and be like, oh, that was useful. Surprising and delighting. That's, that's the core of this, because that is what starts to build people and their emotions towards your site. Now, Groupon, again, has done a wonderful job with their unsubscribe feature. <laughs> If you haven't seen this, uh, and, and you know newsletters, that mailing list phenomenon, oh man, my inbox. But every time you hit unsubscribe on one of those mailing lists, you usually have to go through some awful process where you gotta find like six radio buttons scattered throughout the site, switch them on off, enter your lat long, and then your date of birth, mother's maiden name, and hit submit. It's a pain in the ass to unsubscribe. Instead, Groupon says, okay, we understand. You don't want this mailing list, sorry. It's Derek's fault. And you have this option to punish Derek. So by pressing that button, you see Derek just kind of chilling in his chair. Someone comes up to him, starts yelling at him, throws a cup in his face, and then kicks him. Now, this is very satisfying, albeit a bit sadistic. <laughs> but what this shows is that there's a human being behind here who is actually, and we, we, don't, we know it's not Derek, but some human being said, let's add something special to our unsubscribe functionality. Right? This is the most generic, boring thing in the history of the internet, or at least one of. Let's make this interesting, and then, if we can win over that user, perhaps they'll resubscribe. And although I don't know the numbers, I am willing to bet that the resubscribe rates are significantly higher for Groupon because of this decision making. Now, Blippi, oh, Blippi. What Blippi did have going for it was a fabulous 404 that parodied that wonderful double or triple rainbow video. Well, I think it was a double, was it a double rainbow and then it became, anyway. The, here's a 404 page, right? This is not the place where you'd expect to be entertained. But yet with Reddit, we actually let users design them for us. Um, and then we sue them. No, we don't sue them either. Um, <laughs> we, we look for opportunities, even in the most mundane parts of our sites, to just surprise and delight people. Why are you wasting that opportunity when someone's at a low because they've hit a 404 page when you could be actually giving them something to feel good about? Uh, in fact, if you do a search on Hitmonk and get the dates screwed up, we let you know that we don't yet support time travel. Uh, it's something we're working on, maybe version three. But little things like this when people don't expect it, uh, like when you search for a flight to Vegas, it actually says Vegas baby up in the top. Like little things like this that catch people off guard are the things that start to win loyalty, start to win fans, and start to make them feel like they're part of something bigger than just a website they typed into their browser. And so this gets into the connection, which is something that we've done with Brightpig for the last couple of years. We basically publish, <laughs> we create geeky things. So we publish books for popular web comics like Saturday Morning Breakfast Cereal. That's Zach on the right with a slightly terrified fan, I guess happy, but a little terrified, uh, as well as XKCD. And so these are some of the most popular web comics in the world. Literally millions of people read these comics every day. They're given away for free. So these artists are reliant on merch, basically, to have their lifestyle. And it's phenomenal, because these are artists who truly appreciate. I've, I've learned so much about startups from these web comic artists, because they appreciate their fans, because they know that you know, being a web comic artist was not necessarily something you'd tell your parents and they would get excited about. But they're able to do this for a living because they treat those fans so well. That's Randy actually treating a robot well, which is just prudent because who knows what's gonna happen with the whole Skynet thing. And it just makes sense, I think, to be on their side. Uh, but that was actually at a signing, we had a robot. Only at an XKCD signing would a robot come up for an autograph, but it did, and Randy obliged. But these are the kinds of connections that we wanna create. And so with Red Pig, uh, we're kind of like a Newman's Own for nerds. So we publish these books, and then we donate the non-sustainable profits to related causes. In this case, it's actually to Room to Read, which promotes global literacy. Why do we do that? Well, obviously, because kids who aren't literate can't buy our books. And so by teaching <laughs> literacy, we're growing the market. That's, it's, it's obvious, really, when you think about it. So the first school we built was in Laos. This is the original school. We got photos from Room to Read. And we said, listen, this is the internet. You could take a photo of breakfast and send it across the world. 
and people can look at it. I mean, seriously, go on Twitter. You can see all kinds of photos of people's breakfast. Why not give us a photo of what this thing looks like? Let's start telling this story. Uh, nonprofits like Charity Water, incidentally, have done such a great job with the storytelling. Nonprofits like Donors Choose have done such a great job breaking down big, ambitious projects like making public schooling not suck into much smaller, much more reasonable things that actually get people excited. So we said, all right, room to read. Give us the photos. Let's make a connection with all the fans of XKCD and Red Pig who are buying these books. So we sent these photos. We told the story and we said, listen, by buying this book, we're going to help build a new school. And in doing so, we got people excited. We actually got more photos as the school was getting built. And then we actually visited the school. This is me and Christina Shu, who works with me at Red Pig. We visited the school, brought a book. It was weird, because if you don't speak English, XKCD kind of looks absurd, right? Because it's a bunch of crappy stick figure drawings. No offense, Randy. Um, but it's a bunch of really simple stick figure drawings. The kids were uh, not amused. And, and this was a forced photo op. We didn't, it just, it, the teacher was just like, sit there, and anyway. Uh, <laughs> but this was an incredible opportunity to go back to the XKCD and Breadbook communities and say, hey, this was legit. Like, this wasn't just something we wrote in the margins of the book to make you feel good. Like, we went, we did this, and it was a great experience. And we wrote about it. You know, actually, Christina visited a ton of the other locations where Room to Read It does work, took some great photos, told these stories, and in a very candid way, got a bunch of random people excited. This is the it's a mouthful, but bear with me. The Peace and Social Action Committee of the Midlothian Friends meeting ah, in Virginia. Now, these kids hold a regular fundraiser for awesome stuff. This happened to be a pancake social, and they wanted to raise funds to provide school supplies for that school. Now, they had no relation, as far as I know, to any of those kids in Laos. They had no connection aside from those photos, but it was enough to get them so excited, they raised some serious coin <laughs> for this school. These kids were thrilled, and, and this happened through a few blog posts and some photos and some genuine storytelling. Now you go a step further, and you start to see really awesome stuff happen. This is um, Me Too K on the Twitters. She went to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, tallest peak in Africa, and placed a sticker. Let's enhance. There we go. A bread pig sticker on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Who would have thought? No one asked her to vandalize the sign, but we certainly appreciated it. Why do people do this stuff? Because they feel a connection. And again, all it takes. All we're talking about here are some pixels and some stories. Now, it doesn't have to be about this feel-good, do-goodery stuff. I mean, I adore that stuff. But it, it, it can be about anything. You can actually make a connection with one of the most boring things imaginable, which is forms, OK? All right, web forms. You know what I'm talking about, right? Angle bracket, form, close angle bracket. All the nonsense that goes on in between there is awful. If you've ever, just, just making it work, let alone making it look great, is an agonizing experience. It's the last thing you want to do. So there's this company called Wufu. And they say, we're going to make form building, look at that, easy, fast, and fun. Now that seems absurd. It, when Wufu first, pit, first pitched this, I, I could not believe they had actually hit all three of those adjectives. But they did. And they went a step further. They managed to build a connection with their users, with their paying customers, of web form building software. How did they do that? Old school notes. So every Friday, Everyone at the team at Wufu sits down and writes thank you notes to all of their paying customers. This is a team building exercise, a thousand times better than trust falls, I assure you. And it's CEOs lining up next to new hires and interns, writing thank you notes just to say thank you so much for being a paying customer of our web form building software. Like, that's insane. Like, they actually have fans. How did I get this photo of the thank you note? This is an actual thank you note. It was on Flickr, right? Someone was so blown away by this thank you note, they uploaded it to Flickr. Now, Today, it probably would have been an Instagram or something like that. Um, but the fact that people want to share this stuff, the fact that people actually want to say, wow, this is so novel, I want to share my adoration for a web form building company, is really, really impressive. And even if it is just a form letter, at least sign it. Uh, I, I made the mistake of, of hand stuffing every Reddit shirt we sold for the first like five years, um, which was, that does not scale. Uh, <laughs> not at all. But eventually I was just like, let me just print out a form letter that actually says, I'm sorry, this is a form letter. It's just we're trying to keep the server up and all that stuff. But at least hand sign it. At least do that much. Get, look for an excuse to make that kind of personal touch. Uh, because if, seriously, if a web form building company can make a connection with their users, why can't yours? And whether it's with the community, whether it's with connection, or whether it's with design, these are all elements to do the same end goal, which is build that kind of loyalty and that kind of adoration that you really have no choice but to create these days. And it's because if you look, if you look at the startup versus incumbent comparison, right, you don't have a lot going for you. They've got tons of money, tons of awareness. People have, they've got mind share, right? People know about their brands. 
And ultimately, they've got lots of market share, too. You have very little going for you as a startup. But the reason so many of us continue to do this irrational exercise is because we can focus. We can focus with such determination that even if they wanted to, they could not compete with that kind of concern and interest in making something great. And frankly, we can give a damn. We can give a damn at a startup level about a company that we care about so much compared to opposition that you know clocks out at five or starts thinking about what they're gonna do for the weekend by Tuesday, right? We can care so much more about building that experience and building that into the culture of the company from the very beginning that maybe even if we do get to the scale of the Zapposes of the world, we're still known for being a company that gives a damn about its customers. And if you can, please do it all like you give a damn. That is unfortunately the simple <laughs> distilled version of all this. That's it. You actually, I could have started with that slide, uh, but instead I made you all sit through all that. But frankly, if you can do it all like you give a damn, whether it's building the community, whether it's making the connection with your customers, with your users, or whether it's designing for actual human beings you like, please. Do it all like you give a damn. Thank you.